Thank you very much. So uh, first, I'm very happy to talk this uh, special occasions. And uh, uh, when I was asked to give this talk, uh, uh, I, was, I feel very honored and I'm very happy about it. Uh, but I think uh, since this is an occasion to, for the Maxim Konsevich, so I feel I need to talk something about a kind of a dream or something very much uh, promising in the future. But unfortunately, for years recently, uh, somehow we are more concentrated on something like writing down the foundations in very much detail, rather than pushing the applications ahead. <coughs> and it seems that it is not so much the Maxim's style of mathematics. But, uh, so, but since we spend so much time to write up these details, so I feel that uh, there is some excuse to, do some, to, to, do, to write that kind of thick and heavy things. And these virtual techniques are first invented by several people, including uh, m myself and my collaborators like Ono Ota O, uh, to, study this, uh, uh, to study the foundation of global fitness theory and the flare homology, like a pseudo homology curve. But then uh, I feel that the technique should be somehow related to some people try to use in the quantum field theory physics. So if it really can be used to study some quantum field theory, so it is a good excuse to write this uh, thick volume. So that's something I, 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 want, I, I, I dream. So, but, but then the, the talk, uh, so in application side, what I am going to talk, it does not go so much beyond what I talked in several other occasions. But uh, I, I want to explain more about this uh, uh, foundation things. And uh, uh, in this uh, talk, virtual fundamental class appears uh, for some simple modular space, modular space of constant maps. And this is somewhat better uh, for, for people who want to understand what is virtual techniques. Because uh, if you r start learning virtual fundamental classes, usually it is about uh, pseudo homotopy curve, and you need to start learning uh, nonlinear PDE, and a lot of uh, functional analysis are rather complicated. And if you learn a lot of functional analysis, then this, this story starts. But uh, fortunately, what I'm going to talk does not use any nonlinear PDE or functional analysis. It's just about the finite dimensional topology. So if you, some, there are some people who like this kind of uh, virtual things, but uh, do not like so much nonlinear PDE. So for those people, maybe to explain this particular case might make sense to understand what is this virtual technique is. Okay, so since, I, uh, since the quantum uh, field theory is in my title, I just say a few words about, about it, and I'm not at all a specialist. So uh, when, when you run quantum field theory, we learn that uh, kind of there are a lot of integrals, like a five minor integrals, not, not yet a pass integral, but still five minor integral uh, it can be infinite in many cases. And what physics do is uh, just to somehow regularize uh, to this uh, e e Feynman integrals and to get some finite number. Uh, usually, they, for example, they cut at some energies. So it's a, you are integral. So many, many times this uh, infinity arises from diagonal. So you cut energy, then this uh, infinity is a bit uh, get, get better. And one important point is to, to uh, kind of regularize uh, as much symmetry as possible you keep. And that, that, that's something, the similar problem we meet. And then we have this kind of uh, num system of numbers depending on some, uh, some parameter, say epsilon. And when epsilon goes to zero, you get a kind of something which you want to really calculate. But uh, uh, in certain cases, uh, especially what I heard from physicists is that in the case of topological field theory or some other cases, there is something called a supersymmetry. And this supersymmetry implies that even if you kind of um, fast kind of perturb it a bit, but this final result is independent. And when epsilon goes to zero, so even if this uh, diverges, the epsilon goes to zero, you can still get some finite things. That I think is one of the role of supersymmetry is useful. So I, I want to say some very simple example, but it's an interesting example. It's about uh, Atiyah Zinger index theorem. So you start from this uh, elliptic operators. And what you want to calculate is a difference of dimensions. Dimension of this, so you want little vector bundle. So this is an infinite dimensional space of sessions and the infinite dimensional of sessions. And this difference, and of course, uh, this is infinite. And you want to, then, uh, then what is, uh, many people do is just to take this trace of e to the power minus epsilon p star p. When epsilon is zero, this trace is just this. And when, when, 
epsilon is zero, this is just this. So if you just take a difference, and of course this this uh, when epsilon is positive and p is elliptic, this difference is uh, is finite. And what this supersymmetry means in this case that this difference is actually independent on epsilon. So you can go to epsilon equals zero, then you get something well defined, and that of course index of an elliptic operator. And that, that I think is, is, is this particular uh, some example of this kind of story. But uh, this is a, a linear story. So something nonlinear version of this kind of thing should be, I believe, is a topological field theory. So I want to talk something similar about the different things. So um, this virtual technique uh, started to, uh, for example, main thing is try to define Gromov-Witten invariant. And uh, many in, uh, invariant of topological field theory is some kind of uh, intersection theory. So intersection theory, you can see the following things. You have two cycles on M, and we assume that uh, oh, this, is, this is plus, I'm sorry. The, 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 the plus of degree is dimensions. So in a, in a lucky case, you, you take these intersections and to calculate the orders. And this, this one should be an intersection number. Everything works fine. But uh, of course, uh, uh, this, this works only in case they, are, they are intersect transversally. And if they are not transversal, then you take this. Uh, inter uh, uh, so this is the infinite number. So you can just perturb them so that you get a finite number and it is defined. But uh, sometimes I cannot do, simply do this. That, that, that. And uh, in algebraic geometry and uh, differential geometry, there are some uh, difference between uh, about, uh, around the, the intersection theory. So in algebraic geometry, intersection of cycles is always defined. And uh, um, if, uh, if the intersection is uh, somehow finite order, then it is always positive. And uh, that kind of uh, negative intersection occurs only in case some, some, some component coincides. But in a, in a differential geometry, there are something different. What's different is that uh, in algebraic world, there is a, a no manifold has a boundary. So manifold, complex manifold has a codimension two strata, strata only. So, so the, this is why this intersection number is always very defined. But in the differential geometry world, intersection, <laughs> so intersection number may not be very defined because the cycle, not cycle, but the kind of manifold may have a boundary or corners. That's one reason. And also, even in the case this intersection is a finite order, but you may still uh, have a cancellation, the sign, plus and minus. And in algebraic geometry, mostly the sign is always plus. So, but then, 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 then somehow how to handle this sign and how to handle this uh, uh, non well definedness of the intersection number, these two points is actually some kind of a main thing we need to work out when we do this uh, virtual techniques. So write, write, write up the sign correctly and uh, how, how to handle this non well definedness of the intersections. And uh, in, a, in a kind of topological field theory, the situation, I, I feel, is rather closer to differential geometry than algebraic geometry, because one of the important features of the, some um, topological field theory, especially the, the case of Freya homology, is you, you, you try to define various numbers or various quantities, but they are, in general, not well defined. It means that if you put up, or if you kind of modify the problem so that you can count something, the number you get itself it's not very defined. And uh, what, so something you get very defined is only you define everything as a fall, and everything is very defined only up to homotopy. So that, that happens uh, re very much repeatedly in recent years in this uh, business, in this geometry or in some related fields. So this is the reason that this, this, this uh, kind of differential geometry style of this intersection theory is um, kind of related to these problems. OK, so this is what I want to say. So, so, what I want, so what I want to say about this uh, topological field theory is uh, we need to define various quantities which is not well defined, and we define something only up to homotopy equivalence. And, uh, but then uh, what we do is just to kind of have some bad intersection theory. So we want to put up so that we get a well defined numbers. But then it, it number depend only on this, uh, depend on epsilon. It's a parameter you put up. And uh, the number itself may depend on epsilon. But then uh, if there is some supersymmetry, then this, this is independent on epsilon up to 
some kind of homotopy equivalence. So how to handle this kind of situations in general is a kind of theme of this uh, uh, virtual fundamental chain techniques. But rather than go going to the directory, I want to explain one particular example. Oh, yeah, so making system of intersections of various chains consistently to obtain a system of numbers. So the, the main issue is that uh, each, each intersection, each numbers are not well defined individually. So what you need to be careful is uh, not, not, not study each kind of one problems and to, to get numbers individually. You need to study infinitely many problems at the same time so that uh, everything you do is consistent. And what do I mean by consistent, how to make it consistent? is a kind of a main headache for this virtual techniques. And that, that, that's kind of, yeah, so, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is what these virtual techniques are doing. Yeah. And uh, I will explain the case of constant maps. And uh, that is something, I, and also the, ma the case of these maps from uh, border to Riemann surface. So Riemann surface is boundary. And as I said that uh, you don't need PDE, but you kind of finite dimensional topology. But still, you have some systems of uh, non transversal intersections which are interrelated to each other. So I just want to start explaining which kind of intersection problem you meet. And then uh, I want to explain some kind of general machinery, how to handle this kind of system of intersection problems so that you get a well-defined structure. So the case I, I would explain is uh, this Chan Simons, but uh, I want to start a very simple case, simple things. That is a wage product. So let M be a manifold, and uh, we consider uh, a, a, a triple power of M, M cube. Then you have a, a pro projections to first and second factor, it is M square, and the third factor, this is M. So this is square, this, means, this makes things a bit nonlinear. In a, in a sense, like a linear partial differential equation, you have a m square and m and m. But you have a, a, a m square and m and m. So you have just a re, linear things. But this is a kind of multi-linear. And the, the, the thing we use is this uh, diagonal. So small diagonal, m itself, j, x, 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 x. You have this m cube. And this, this, this kind of diagram is, called, is a kind of correspondence. And this, what this correspondence uh, gives you is a wedge product. Suppose you have a two differential forms. So lambda m today is always a differential form. You have a smooth differential forms, a pair of smooth differential forms on m. So you get uh, h1, h2, then you can just take an exterior product. You get the differential form of m square. Then you pull back by this uh, map. And uh, you take this uh, uh, distributions. It's a Poincare dual to diagonal. So this is a, a, m is n dimension now. This is three n dimensions. And uh, this diagonal has n dimensions, so this distribution has a degree to m. So you can wedge these distributions, and you take a f uh, integration along the fibers, and it is easy to see that what you get is this uh, usual wedge product. So this just means that you take this particular distributions, it gives us some kind of Schwarz kernel of the wedge product. So this is a, and, 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 and this product is well defined, there is no infinity yet. But uh, for the purpose of, of later use, I want to make uh, these uh, distributions, uh, t uh, diagonal, uh, a bit smoother, so to, to regularize these distributions. And uh, the, the, the data we need to do is the following things. So, the, 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 so we, we, this diagonal is, is, is somehow, this distribution is not supported on, on, a, on an open set, it's just on a closed set. That's why it is not a smooth and its distributions. So we take this uh, open tubular neighborhood of the diagonal, and uh, you have uh, these uh, projections of, uh, of the tubular neighborhood, and you take normal bundle of this diagonal in M cube, and you put it back on this uh, U. So you have this U and E, and you have a natural canonical section S. It's just a total logical section, because U is an open subset of this normal bundle itself. And uh, the property is that the zero set of this uh, total logical section is just diagonal itself. So in place of uh, studying diagonal, we consider this triple. U is a tubular neighborhood of the diagonal, and E is a kind of normal bundle, and S is a total logical section. So this triple is a uh, kind of a simplest, very simple version of the structure. 
And actually, um, in this talk, uh, the, the query structure appears rather in this simple way. Sometimes, in, 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 in general, we, we have only locally this kind of representation, presentations. You have a pair of spaces, bundles, and the sections. And you represent your space, space as a zero set of the sections. And in general, you need to do it locally. But in this simple story of, uh, of constant maps, you can do it globally. So you have just this, this kind of triples. And the, 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 the reason that this is better is that this map from U to M3 is some margins. M cube is some margin, because this is open set. So then we have to see that this picture as a diagram like this. So you have this uh, disk with three marked points. And you have a map U. And uh, the partial differential equation in this case is very simple. It's not even a differential equation. The, 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 the condition is just U is constant maps. So you consider the moduli space of constant maps from the uh, border Riemann surface with three marked points. And uh, border Riemann surface with three marked points is, of course, uh, no, no moduli. And this U constant map is parameterized by M itself. So the moduli space is very simple, that M itself. And that is exactly this uh, diagonal. And you have this separation map. And this separation map, of course, is this x go to x, x, x. So that's a, that's a simple case. So now. I want to go to the next case. So uh, you, you can increase the marked points, but in place of this increasing marked point, you, go, you, you put a uh, one loop case. And the simple, simplest case is this guy. So you have this uh, disk with three marked points, but you uh, put the conditions that the first and second marked point go to the same, same point. Of course, this is uh, rather ridiculous, because uh, your equation is uh, u is constant, so this is always satisfied. But let us consider. This are the kind of conditions. Then uh, the moduli, so your, your moduli space is this uh, singular uh, annuli, so annulus with uh, one node. And, and uh, you have a pair of this uh, uh, moduli space and a map u to m that is a constant map. Of course, the moduli space, so, so that then you can regard this, uh, this, this one as a foreign fiber product. So you have a diagonal. Diagonal is a moduli space of this uh, disk with uh, three marked points. But then you equate that this z1, z2 go to the same point. This means that you take another m, m square, and you take a fiber product. And the first, first factor goes to x, 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 x. And the second factor goes x, y, and x, x, y. This means that you equate the first and the second go to the same place. So you take this uh, simple fiber product. And uh, of course, this simple fiber product, set theoretically, is again equal to m. It's just a constant map. And the source has no moduli. But what's wrong about it is that this, this fiber product is not a good fiber product. Its dimension is not correct. I mean, this, this, this dimension should be zero dimensional, but it has an M itself, because the intersection is not transversal. So you can write, you can um, kind of rephrase it in the following way. So this, this uh, diagonal as a current is equal to this, uh, the x, y, z is m. So you have a delta, delta functions and dx, dy, dz. This is two n forms. But then uh, this m, q, m square is just to you equate x is equal to y. So you have a delta x minus y dx. So you want to uh, take uh, intersections and you want to count the number. The natural thing is to, to, to take a wedge of these two current and integrate. But of course, uh, this is uh, not well defined because x minus y Delta, delta function of x minus y square is uh, not very defined. So you try to do this by some kind of a ways, then you get infinity. And how to kind of re 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 remove this infinity is, uh, is something like related to this uh, intersection theory. And if you think a bit about the intersection number of this uh, delta m and m square, you, you will see that this is the Euler number. So, so, so somehow you want, to, you want to regularize these integrations to get Euler number. So this is the kind of first part of these things. And uh, so now, but now, in place of this taking this diagonal itself, you take this uh, open neighborhood. So you take this u, the tubular neighborhood of your uh, diagonal. And you take e, that is uh, uh, obstruction bundles. So you take this triple in place of this taking m itself. So what's nice is that this u, if you take this u, it's a neighborhood of the diagonals. Then you can take this uh, fiber product. It is a just well defined fiber product. So this is this is a, I, I think a n dimensional. No 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 two n dimensional manifold. 
and E is rank 2n bundles. So you have a 2n dimensional manifold and rank 2n bundles and S. And uh, so, you, so this, this, this manifold is 2n dimensional, and this is uh, rank 2n. But S is something singular, so something non-transversal. So that this zero set is again this M itself. So this, this, you, you can cook up this fire product naturally, and E also, but S is not transversal to zero. So that, that's the reason your space is long. So, you, you, so, so but, but uh, st still, what's, what's nice is that you can take this fiber product. So you, by increasing somehow your space like this, you can always make your fiber product very defined. And you can make this picture a bit smaller. So this S is not transversal to zero. So but then you can just reduce this. So the co-kernel of this S is actually tangent bundle. And then uh, this is a, since this is a finite rank, so in place of this taking two n-dimensional manifold, that is something like a neighborhood of M. You just take M itself. So you replace, uh, you replace this uh, triple, this guy and uh, E and S by a bit smaller one. So you get M tangent bundle zero. And this is our triple. And uh, what, what's wrong is that this S is not, is, is zero, so it's not transversal. But you can, you can turn this uh, uh, zero, something like a non-generic non sections, and you get the Euler number. So that's that, so that, 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 that story. OK, so now, now so this, so this is in this particular, some particular things. But then uh, this thing is a boundary of some other moduli spaces. So you can just take, gen you can take this uh, general, uh, general um, annuli. So in place of taking this moduli space, just at one point, you take moduli space of annuli and the constant map again. So now we consider this uh, moduli space M1, 1, 0. So this 1 means that the, uh, I'm sorry, this is 0. I'm sorry, this should be 0. Annulus has genus 0. Sorry, this is wrong. So you have a genus 0 Riemann surface, and you have this 1, 0, you have a 2 boundary component, and one, one of them has just one marked point, and the other has no marked point. So that, that, that's this, uh, so this is M0, 1, 0. And you have a parameter u, that is m. So you have this moduli space. And so this, so this moduli space is actually, you can calculate very easily. So this is 0 again, I said. So moduli space of annuli with one marked point is exactly interval. So you have this interval. And this moduli space is interval times m. And uh, this is a very nice smooth moduli space. But uh, uh, you are not supposed to regard this is a transversal moduli space. And, uh, and the equation that u is constant is actually degenerate equations. And in this case, you have a obstruction bundle that is H1 of your annulus. And H1 of your annulus is uh, rank 1. And you have uh, this kind of uh, tangent bundle coefficient H1. That is our E. So you, you have this space itself, but you have uh, this obstruction bundle. So you, the, the triple you have is this uh, zero uh, interval times M and tangent bundle and zero sections. So this is actually this uh, triple, which you get in this case. And what, what you can observe is that it, uh, what you can observe that you go to one of the boundaries. So you have a boundary of this uh, uh, moduli space of annuli with marked points has two boundary points. And uh, one of the boundary points is just you get here. And the other boundary is something here. So this is a case when this uh, uh, inner circle shrinks to a point. And this boundary appears actually in, in a talk by um, Costeros and also Muhammad Abzai. So it appears in a similar way. but. Uh, but anyway, so you have a two uh, boundary of this moduli space. But then on this first boundary, what's, what's uh, good about this is if you go to this boundary, then um, the pictures, you have this uh, 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 moduli space of annuli is uh, this interval times m and tangent bundle. And if you consider this, so you get by taking fiber product, you obtain this similar moduli space. And this is exactly coincides much with this. So the story is, is something like this. You have a kind of a moduli space of genus, uh, genus 0, two boundary marked points, and one, uh, two, one boundary marked points. And then you put uh, H, using H1, you put obstruction bundles. And you go to the boundary of this moduli space. You have the same moduli space as this fiber product, which came from genus, genus 0 with one boundary component. So what I want to claim is that this is a completely general picture. So, so you can take, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the second boundary, uh, the, there is a way to handle this sec second boundary, which I think is uh, Costello mentioned a bit. Um, in a particular case, you can just assume that the Euler class of M is, is zero, 
then uh, this uh, zero sections have a chain which bounds it, and you can eliminate this boundary using these chains. But that's not so much things I want to talk today. So now we can completely generalize these pictures in an arbitrary Riemann surface of arbitrary genus and arbitrary boundary components and arbitrary number of marked points. So we consider this M, G, K1, K2, blah, 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 KL. So that's a kind of moduli space of bordered Riemann surface. And this Riemann surface is supposed to have a genus G. And we assume that it has an L boundary component. And on each boundary component, you have a K1, K2, blah, 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 KL marked points on, the, on, on S1, which respect this uh, cyclic ordering. So we consider this moduli space. And this is uh, actually a manifold with corners. So you get manifold with corners like this. And you consider this plus uh, constant maps. So the moduli space you get is this, this one. So this is a, I think this is not an orbifold. This is not a manifold, but it's an orbifold. But you have a kind of at least smooth orbifold and a smooth manifold. And you have obstruction bundles. And the section is zero. So you have this uh, triple, so that you have one, mani <coughs> one orbifold and one vector bundle on it. And uh, the section is uh, happen to be zero in this case. So you have a system of this triple for many z, k1, blah, 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 kl. And what we know is that, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so, but then I want to say something about this, because this one is, is a good, good manifold, but if you consider a uh, evaluation map, then the evaluation map just goes to diagonals, so it's not a submergent. The problem is, uh, if this is not submergent, you cannot take fiber product. I mean, as I said, that in the case of this, going to DNAS 0 to DNAS, no, no, 0 loop to 1 loop, you have to kind of equate two points intersect. And uh, you, you, you do not extend this uh, moduli space of three marked point disk. This, 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 this equation is not good equations. So to make it transversal, you need to make this uh, evaluation map to be a submergence. That you can do easily by, by, just, by just replacing this M. To, uh, I'm sorry, to replace M to a kind of tubular neighborhood of this uh, big of this small diagonal in a big, big, big product. And you can just take normal bound and pull back. So you can just extend this a bit. Uh, this is zero is not correct. This is the total of your sessions. I'm sorry, this zero is not correct. This first factor, the, the, the map is zero, but the second factor, you take this uh, tautological map. So that uh, the zero set is again the same thing. So you have this uh, a bit bigger modular space. You can just use this and this. And uh, they are somehow equivalent as a kind of structures. So what we get is that you have this uh, system of uh, modular spaces together with this uh, evaluation map to the power m to the power k. k is the sum of ki. And what, what's nice of this picture is uh, if, you, if you go to the boundary of this modular space, it, it means that you have a kind of uh, border dream and surface. You have some singularity. And then this singular things, in the case of this uh, um, uh, annuli, can be written as a fiber product of something you get in an earlier stage over m. So the, this is the general picture you have. You have a kind of, for each alpha, a, a is some partial order set. In a special case, a is a combination of the genus and k1, blah, 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 kl. You can order it by something like a lexicotic order. And then on this partial order set, you obtain this uh, triple. U alpha is an orbifold with corner. E alpha is a vector bundle in the orbifold sense on this. And S alpha is a section. And its zero set is your moduli space. So you have these uh, sections of this uh, triple, or various alpha. And you have F alpha from U alpha to this n to the power n alpha. And this is, this is assume, can be assumed to be some margins. And what's nice is that you take the boundary of this, then it is a union of various fiber products of, of something you get in earlier stage. And its fiber product is taken by, this, by using a part of this evaluation maps. So this is in the particular case of this uh, uh, system of the pictures, in the case of constant maps. So this, this, this is, you know, what's, what's nice is that it is rather easy to cook up these this, this constructions. You have this uh, modular space of Riemann surface, and you have just M. And you can just take this neighborhood of diagonals. And if you want to do this in a more general setting of kind of, in, in the case when you have a pseudo holomorphic curve, then you can cook up this kind of pictures using nonlinear PDE and a lot of functional analysis. But here, you're just finite dimensional topology. So you can just get this. 
So the only thing you need is to understand what this uh, degenerations of border Riemann surface occurs. So, that, so, so, so but uh, anyway, so this is a kind of quite general situations. And uh, this occurs, I think, in how many stories, especially it, this occurs in pseudo homomorphic curve. But uh, in this case, pseudo homomorphic curve is very simple, just a constant map. So then the, what is the virtual chain technique is the following. You start from this kind of systems. You have this uh, system of OB4, system of vector bundles, system of sections. And uh, these triple are related to each other as a boundary by fiber product. Then the virtual technique says that you can kind of systematically part up all these moduli spaces so that it is kind of consistent to this fiber product restriction on the boundary. And so that is what this uh, virtual technique do. And once you can do it, you, you get some system of numbers. And this system of numbers is actually kind of Chan Simon theory of your manifold. And uh, that says that this uh, uh, the system of numbers you get actually depends on the choice of perturbations. However, you, you can cook up some cobordism argument so that if you make these perturbations consistently for all alpha, the what you finally obtain is well defined up to certain homotopy equivalence. And what I want to emphasize is that this is a kind of complete general theorem. So you can just you have this kind of uh, general uh, situations, then you can always put up everything in a consistent way so that you get something well defined after homotopy. So this is a kind of a general general procedure, and which, this is what this uh, virtual technique are doing. And uh, yeah. Actually, so the virtual techniques, uh, I, I think there are several group of people, including myself, try to, uh, ourselves, to write, to write down and uh, write down this in details. And uh, uh, unfortunately, when we write down the details, the, 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 the totality is rather thick volume. And uh, I, I feel that it, it seems impossible to write down um, in complete detail less than 500 pages. But uh, what's, what's, what's good is about this story, it's even, it is heavy, but it works always. So, I mean, it means that uh, you don't need any uh, kind of uh, special assumptions. So, you, whenever you have this kind of things, it, all, it always works. So, the, the good news is that something like uh, this, this kind of things you can use without understanding. Because, because if you need delicate conditions, then you need to understand why this works, and you have to be very careful before you use it. But uh, my, my propaganda about this virtual technique is that uh, this is free, so it, it works uh, whenever. It, this, this situation appears. So you don't even need, need, need to read this kind of complicated things, and you can just use it, because it, it works always. So what I want to uh, do in the rest, rest of my time is uh, to state this theory a bit more precisely, so that, uh, so that uh, you can use it. And uh, something we are doing for this uh, year is uh, somehow to write down the statement which you can use without uh, uh, knowing the proof, because uh, I'm pretty sure that not so many people want to read the proof because it is the proof is something like a, a similar to what you uh, learn in a third or fourth year undergraduate course of manifold theory, and there are some some people like Dominic Joyce and he I think Dominic Joyce want to write that story as close to the theory of schemes and stacks, but uh, I'm rather differential geometers than, than algebraic geometers, so I want to make it as close as uh, to theory of manifolds. So it's an advantage. I think, uh, I think uh, uh, smooth manifold is easier than scheme. So that, that's, uh, and what I, what I want to explain in, uh, uh, in the rest of the time is very much similar to uh, what you learn in undergraduate course of manifold theory. So I want to explain what is the integrals and what is the, okay. So now I want to do it what is a bit more precise. So you start from this uh, station. So I want to consider individual space. You have a triple U, E, S. So let me remind you that U is an orbifold, E is a vector bound in orbifold sense, and S is a section. And uh, maybe only assumption is S inverse zero is, uh, is uh, compact. It may be very singular, but you assume it's compact. U may not be compact. You have a kind of open neighborhood. And something you need some orientability. And also you have a F from U to M. M is a manifold. And this map you assume to be some margins. So that's the situations you work with. Then the theorem is that you have a sheaf on U, which, which you can associate to these things, the sheaf of set, and it has the following properties. So I want to explain which properties this sheaf has. And this sheaf is a kind of a sheaf which parameterizes the way you put up your modular space. 
So you have some, some, some sheaf which parameterize the perturbations. So what is the first, the first property of the sheaf? The first property of the sheaf is the following. So you have this, 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 this uh, triple. And suppose H is a differential form of comp with compact support in uh, some open set o omega of U. And suppose you have a sections of your sheaf on, 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 on omega. On, on omega. Then you can define push out or integration along the fibers of these differential forms. <laughs> you, you get a somehow differential form of M. But it depends on epsilon. That is positive. So this means that, uh, I mean, some, something I want to do is just to push out these differential forms on, on this uh, space to M. Of course, you have a differential form on U, and M, M is some margins. And compact support smooth form by some margin, you can always push, push out integration of the fibers. But uh, uh, the space itself is not U, but it's a kind of zero set of S. And zero set of S is uh, extremely wild. So you cannot push out your differential forms on this wild set. But you have uh, some parameter space, which regularize your zero set. And if you fix this uh, element of this parameter space, and fix epsilon, you can push out the differential forms. And uh, the typical situation, I mean, it's easier situation, it, 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 this, this push out the following form. Suppose that this S, this S is transversal to zero. Then S inverse zero is a smooth manifold, compact smooth manifold, but uh, F may not be uh, some margins. But then you can still push out the virtual forms, but what you get is a current. And the property of this uh, push out is that if you go to epsilon goes to zero, then this push out is a current, which is a push out of H. So you can write it in the following way. If you have a S, uh, any test functions, the smooth forms on them, you pull back on these forms on you, and you integrate over this zero set of S. Since this is transversal to zero, this makes sense. This integration is equal to this uh, push out and wedge sig sigma and take limit epsilon goes to zero. So that, 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 that's a property. So something we want to do is just to, this is a smooth form which regularizes the push out of this uh, differential form on uh, F S in bus zero. So that, that, that's, that's something we do. But of course, in general, zero set of S is not a smooth sum manifold. It is a singular space. And you cannot expect that this limit converge other distributions. In a case, S inverse zero is, uh, is, is wild. So it can be a very wild thing. And I don't want to um, go to epsilon. I, want, I don't want to study epsilon in zero itself. But it kind of very close to zero, you get some number. And this number may depend on epsilon. This number may depend on these perturbations. But you still get something. So that, that is this, uh, what these shifts do. But then there are several other properties of the sheaf. The next property is uh, this sheaf is, uh, I, I, I'm not so much sure about this terminology. This is soft. The soft sheaf means that you have any closed set on omega, then there is a kind of restriction of the sections. This is always subjective. So it means, so, so why, why this is good? So because this, 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 uh, this, this property you can use to prove the existence of the sections. I mean, what you want to do is just you want to construct this, uh, this parameter uh, of this section of this sheaf systematically. But then this is soft sieve. It means that you have a kind of, you define something over there. You can always extend to get uh, something you want. So this is a soft sieve. Moreover, you can define a partition of unity for this sieve. And this sieve is unfortunately, it's not a sieve of groups. It is a sieve of uh, set. So, but it's kind of a fine type thing. So you can define partial still part of unity, and you can define these extensions. So this, this is the main thing we can use to, to, to prove the existence of this kind of perturbations. And uh, so since you, you are working on these integrations, the main theorem should be Stokes theorem. So it's something like a, 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 we learn at the end of the course of manifold. It's Stokes theorem. So what does Stokes theorem mean? That uh, suppose you have this triple U E S. And suppose this U over here has a boundary. It may have a corner, but it may have a boundary and corners. So you restrict this H to this uh, boundary of U. And you restrict this. Uh, so there is a notion of this. Uh, uh, you, 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 can, you have a restriction map of this section of sieves to the boundary. You restrict these sections to the boundary. And the option is the same. And you just push. So you, you use this data to push out. But uh, this is a kind of um, D of this uh, push out. And, uh, push out of this D of H. So uh, maybe minus, it, it, the sign you need to work out. So th this means that, uh, that if you go to the boundaries, uh, this is related to this. Uh, so this is actually a Stokes theorem. And to make it clear, I want to explain one, part, one special example. So suppose that M is just a point. 
So in this case, uh, push out, you get a number. So it's a usual integration. So I, I, in place of writing this, I just want to write integrate, integration. So you can integrate h of this uh, space u with this uh, perturbation data. This is the number depending on epsilon. And this integration satisfies this usual Stokes theorem. If you, the, if you integrate the boundary, and it's uh, equal to this uh, integration of d of h. So this is the Stokes theorem. So now, the other thing I want to explain is uh, something like a Fubini theorem or a composition formula. So what is Fubini theorem? Fubini theorem is something related to how these integrations behave by product. And uh, as you see, that the, uh, the, the story I want to cook up is you have a system of spaces so that uh, one boundary of one space is, is described by fiber product of the other spaces. And something what this virtual thing, virtual technique do, is you start from this geometric situations and you rewrite all these uh, geometric relations systematically to algebraic relations. So this means that, uh, so usually, so, so the equations we have on our spaces is something like, uh, like this. Boundary of u alpha is a kind of a <coughs> sum of fiber product, right? So I want to write this, this, this equation something like a d of m equal to m, m. So this is a kind of algebraic operation, uh, relations among, the, uh, among these uh, operators. And this is geometry. So to go this to, to this from this is, is, is a kind of main thing upon this uh, virtual things, chain level virtual technique. But then you see that here you have this boundary. So you can, you can kind of translate this boundary of your space to this uh, operator D by using Stokes theorem. So this one, so this, this part you, you, you have a Stokes theorem. But on the other hand, the other part is a fiber product and you want to relate to the compositions. So that is the role of this Fubini. Well, or uh, this push out uh, Fubini theorems. So I want to state this Fubini theorem a bit more precise. So we are in the following situations. Suppose you have a ui, i is 1, 2, u1, e1, S, u1, ui, ei, si, i is 1 and 2. And you have a map fi to m. So you have this, uh, this map. Then uh, for these systems, you can take fiber product. As I say that this f1 and f2 are some margins, you can just take this fiber product. The space u is just fiber product, and you can put back these uh, sections obstruction bundles by this map. So you get UES, so you have this U. And also, also you have this, uh, your, your sheaf uh, has a kind of a compatible of this uh, fiber product operations. So suppose you have this, uh, so you have this S1, U1, this is a sheaf here, and S2, U2 is a sheaf here. So you put back this sheaf by this pi1, pi2, and you have this sheaf here, this related to the structures, and you have this natural operations. So the sheaf operation means that you have a series of maps which are compatible with the restrictions. So you get this, you have two perturbation data here, then you get this product perturbation data. So that, that, that's always possible. And this, what Fubini theorem says the following things. Suppose you have this H1, or differential form on U1, and H2, differential form on U2. Then you do the following two things. And also you have this S1 and S2 on U1 and U2. So first thing is that you push out differential forms on, by, by this, uh, using this data. You get a differential form of M. And you push out using this uh, uh, S2, and you get a differential form of M also. You take the wedge product. This is smooth differential forms on this finite dimensional manifold. And you integrate. So this is the, this second formula. And the first formula, you have a differential form here. You put it back here. And you have another differential form. You put it back here. And you take wedge. And then you use this uh, product perturbation data, and you integrate by this product perturbation data. So the Fubini theorem says that this is just equal. And if you think the very simple case, like uh, E1 and E2 is zero, then uh, this is exactly what this you can prove by Fubini theorem itself. So you have this uh, Fubini theorems. Now, um, this, this, so, so this is Fubini, and I want to say that this is related to composition formula something like a composition of a smooth correspondence that I want to explain. So you, in a usual situation, you have this U, and you have F2, but not only F2, you have only, always F1. So you have this triple, and F2 should be some margin, but F1 may not be some margin. So this one is something like a C infinity version of the correspondence. So we use this correspondence diagrams. I want to write a script U. 
Then, once we have this correspondence diagrams, you can associate a map from differential form of M1 to differential form of M2. It is very easy to do so. You have an H here, you pull back by F1. This is a free. Pull back with differential form is very easy. You can pull back differential forms here on the U, but then you prepare this uh, data, which you integrate this on this U. Then you can push out using this. You can pull back and push down, you get this uh, co correspondence. So once you are given this, uh, this uh, di correspondence diagram together with this data, script S, then you get this, uh, 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 this continuous map of correspondence. So that, that, that is something uh, what this uh, um, virtual things uh, give in general. Then uh, you can compose the correspondence in a following way. You have this correspondence from M1 to M2. And you have a I'm sorry, this is 3. You have a correspondence from M2 to M3. So you take the fiber product of this side. This one is submergent, so you can just take fiber product here. So you can use this fiber product. And then you can compose this, you get this map. And you compose this, you get this map. This is the composition of the correspondence. Of course, it's, it's, it's usual. And then, um, um, then you have a composition. And also, since uh, this one is again submergent, you can just use this uh, product of this uh, perturbation data, and you get this uh, perturbation data here. It is a correct com com composition. And uh, what Hubini theorem says in this case is that you take a correspondence of this uh, map associated to this correspondence. It's just a composition of this and this. You can just com so this, this one, and it goes to this one. So that's what this Hubini says. So you can, your Hubini theorem immediately says that you, this, this uh, process uh, associating linear map of differential forms to smooth cor correspondence is compatible with the process to compose the maps. It's a, it's a completely functorial. So this is this uh, uh, Hubini theorem. So you have this Stokes and Hubini, and you can use this uh, uh, existence theorems. But then I want to uh, claim another uh, last property of these things. So um, you have this, uh, again, triple UES and a script U. Script U is a, script U is this uh, triple, and uh, U in general has a corner. And uh, suppose that you have a boundary and, and a corner. So this is the kind of picture. Yeah, but, so then, then this boundary can be decomposed into union of finitely many components, and uh, each two components intersect along the corners. There might be higher dimensional corner, but kind of co-dimension two corner they intersect. And uh, and this uh, final property is the problem. Suppose you have this uh, data which de describes perturbations on this uh, boundary 1, boundary 2, boundary 3, individually, this. And suppose that they coincide on this uh, co-dimension 2 corners. Then you can extend this system to the whole systems. And uh, let me remind you that this, this shift is actually a soft shift. So if you extend this system to a neighborhood of the boundary, they actually you are done because it is an open set. So if you have a kind of a closed set, and it, uh, it, it extended to its open neighborhood, then it ex extends to everywhere. But uh, the, the, this, this boundary itself is, is, is not an open set. So you need a bit, some property, to extend this uh, system to a small neighborhood of this, uh, of this uh, system of the boundaries. But uh, you can always do it. This is what this theorem says. So these, I believe that these are other kind of, these, these claims are kind of a simple thing to understand. It's, 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 it's a, I, I don't want to explain what is this, the shift, shift itself, because you don't need to understand what it is. It is not so much complicated. It's but, not empty, yeah? Huh? It's not empty, it's not complicated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 of course, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah not, not only soft, but also uh, jam is non-trivial, yes. <laughs> that, that's important, yes, you're right. <laughs> so if you, you know that this, all these properties, then uh, kind of what I claimed about this, uh, you, can, you can do this uh, perturbation in complete generality, it just follows from all the properties I just explained. So this is, a, this is the situation you start with. You have a system of the triples, some uh, OB4 vector bundles and sections, and what you know is that uh, this is parameterized by partial order set. And you go to the boundary, it is a pi product of something you get in an earlier stage. So now, something you want to do is just to associate, to associate uh, this S of alpha for each of this U alpha so that it is consistent with this uh, identity, with this kind of identities. 
And you can do it just without knowing any proof, just, just the, the, all the things I, I claimed. You start from this uh, inductions. So your, your alpha is uh, parameterized by some partial order set A. So you start something smallest. There it doesn't have a boundary. And uh, uh, Maxim says that this is non-empty. So uh, non-empty at one point, the softness implies that the uh, uh, global thing is non-empty. But then you go to this uh, induction hypothesis. So you want to construct, you know, suppose you have this construct S of alpha or any beta, which is strictly smaller than alpha. Then you want to look this diagrams, and you take this boundary here, they have this uh, S of beta 1, S of beta 2, everywhere here. And uh, actually, I didn't say that somehow this, 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 uh, this kind of uh, stratifications are designed so that these descriptions are automatically compatible in codimension 2 corners. So, so then the assumptions that everything, which is uh, each boundary component well defined and the codimension 2 corner consistent, extend to the interior is satisfied. So you get this system of this, uh, um, uh, of this uh, data of perturbations. So that, that, that's a kind of free. You can use that, those properties I, I claimed. So now you can, you, can use this, uh, uh, you can use this data to integrate differential forms, which you have on, this, on, on, on M. You can just pull back the differential forms to integrate. So you get a kind of a system of numbers for each alpha or a kind of system of uh, linear maps between differential, differential forms on each alpha. So you get this uh, uh, huge family of operations. And what's good is that, as I said here, you have this uh, equality between boundary of moduli space by other moduli space via fiber product. But then you can use the Stokes theorem so that this one gives just the D of this, uh, D of this operations. And this composition formula means that this second one is just a composition of these two morphisms. So you get this uh, uh, equalities you want immediately once you have this uh, cook up these systems. And the typical example is in, if you just restrict to this uh, genus zero and one boundary mark point, then you get uh, infinity structures immediately from these constructions. And, but that, that, that you need uh, analysis because, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you need shadow homework curve. But in this particular case of these constant maps, you have this system of constant maps. So you get this uh, system of some operations of differential forms on M. And that basically is a Chan Simon theory. And I think, uh, and, and uh, this satisfies certain locality properties one can use because uh, every, uh, every evaluation map lies in a neighborhood of diagonal. And if you read this uh, Costello's book about this part of Chan Simons, and he, he, his construction, I think he, you, you, you kind, of, uh, kind of prove some kind of uniqueness. You have kind of some system of these numbers so that it supports the near the diagonals. Then it is unique and it should be something co coincide with what you did, right? So this implies that uh, what we produce in this way exactly coincides to this uh, perturbative chan Simons. And uh, also, so, so, so now, 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 now so this, is, this perturbative chan Simon in some particular case. But uh, you, you can say that, you know, well, the, 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 here we, we don't use any functional analysis. You have this just uh, M itself, constant maps. But this story, you can immediately generalize. If you know a bit about the functional analysis and the pseudo homo curve analysis. And uh, you, can, you can generalize to any Lagrangian sum manifold in, in symplectic manifold. So you can, you can cook up this uh, moduli space. So this is a kind of reading on the term of the moduli space, which is a constant map. You can include non-constant maps. And you have these similar systems. And you can do the same process to get the uh, whole kind of quantum version of perturbative chan Simon theory. OK. And as I said, that, but in this, to, 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 that, to, to, to that generalities, we need a bit more. Because here, we have these uh, descriptions of each moduli space by just single OB4 and single vector bundle and single sessions. And if you want to do this functional analysis, you can obtain similar pictures, but only locally. So if you, if you consider this moduli space of pseudo homework curves, you have similar descriptions by this triple, but uh, it, 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 it works only a neighborhood of each point of your moduli space. So a neighborhood of your moduli space, you can construct this kind of triple. That is, uh, this, uh, I think, uh, goes back to Kuranish's work on deformation of complex structures 50 years ago. And that, that's Kuranish pictures. And something which is a bit uh, more recent is we can glue. There, there is a notion of coordinate change of this kind of local pictures. And so what, 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 we, what we can do is just have a kind of system of this kind of uh, neighborhood at each point in the moduli space so that they are compatible. Then we can write down, we can work out the stories I just explained in a simple case in a complete general setting on this uh, Kuranich structures, and you get system of this uh, perturbation data, and you get system of operations among differential forms, 
and which satisfy this uh, property, which is Stokes theorem and this uh, Fubini type theorems. So in, in that way, you can do this uh, pseudo homework car business. And I, I believe that in that way, kind of almost the, most of the modular spaces, uh, you, you can use the same techniques. And the output should be that uh, you, you can usually kind of think the modular spaces. And you forget uh, uh, like uh, any, any mathematical details, you can kind of frankly think what is the boundary of this and what, is, uh, what it looks, should be looks like. And you write down this kind of formulas. And, and that formula should be rigorous rather immediately. So, kind of, so, so you don't need to work out kind of any artificial or ad hoc methods. You can do always that kind of things. So that kind of things I wanted to work, uh, I, we are now kind of writing more and more details. And uh, so I don't know how much we can use this as a, to a quantum field theory, because this uh, chance Simon is very, very special. But uh, something, some, something like this, uh, to have this kind of thing right at diagonal and to regularize it, and to make it uh, completely consistent with uh, kind of uh, symmetry, you, you see a lot in a, in a book, textbook of quantum field theory. So, I don't know, I mean, if you, want to, if you can do this, for example, in a yam theory or something like that. But if you can do this, then, then you may try to use this kind of techniques or quantum field theory. I don't know, but it's a kind of dream. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe I missed the point in the beginning. Sure. Sure. Pardon? What's your sense? It's not three dimensions. AKZ, yeah. Yeah, so in that, in that case, you have a kind of operations between differential forms. Yeah. So in a, in, a, in a usual three dimensional chance Simons, you assume something like a uh, cohomology is zero. So, so, so in this way, you have a kind of operation between cohomologies. Yes. And you also you can do family versions, so that make, makes it non trivial. Yeah. So when you say it's chance Simons, so what is the group? Group. So here we are just using differential forms, but you can include this uh, uh, vector band. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are tri trivial, but yeah, you can you can include groups on the on on on, on M surfaces. surfaces yeah. Element, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Other question. So you have your unions of fiber products. Yeah. So are those unions like plumbings? I mean, you have a, so you have this this uh, fiber product of two, and they are glued in a kind of triple fiber product. But it's like plumbing, that you actually plumb vector bundles. No, no, it's just a direct, direct sum. And fiber, and you... Triple fiber? No, this is just the manifold with corners. Yeah, but then you get corners. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the union is, is, ah. is, is double foliated by... by big yeah, 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 yeah. There is something like a kind of, you know, this set itself, boundary itself, is not a manifold with corners. Yeah. Because, in a, so you can just kind of, Pull back, push back. So it's something, yeah, yeah. It's something, yeah, normal, normal that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, if you have the solution of the master equation, you produce some kind of coaching complex from cyclic homology. Yeah, 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 that's exactly. Yeah. yeah, can you do this like locally on the manifold? Produce like a factorization over that? Okay. Locally on manifold means. Uh, locally on the three manifold. Yeah, probably this is local, yeah, because you, you, your perturbation just works on this, uh, on, on the diagonals. Uh, but, 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 uh, but you have epsilon, yeah, epsilon, yeah. maybe need some kind of... Detail. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Describe, describe abstract symmetric support. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's also what this related is. Uh, we, we are doing, and so Costello appears. If you fix epsilons, you can just do this on a finite many, many stage. So you have to do this uh, kind of inductive limit things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, you, so, so, you, you can, you, so the, the strategy is that you put these structures up to some level. And then uh, they fix epsilons, and then you take this homotopy inductive limit. That I think is similar to what you appeared in your books. And then uh, we, we, we do it also on infinity things. So that, that's always we need. Yeah, actually, I have not a question, but some kind of tangential remark. There was also sort of a lot of these equations. But in the case we don't have corners, suppose in complex situation, that two complex cycles intersect not transverse and should be zero dimensional, yeah? Mm -hmm. and, and then it's, it's a, maybe it's, in fact, it's infinite dimensional, virtual dimension is zero. And then physics should sub give something depending on small parameters as well. And the naive idea just apply heat current with time epsilon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smooth. Yeah. And, uh, and then there's naive conjecture that you get smooth volume form, uh, which will be concentrated in the six. And uh, naive conjecture that it will be, have limited distribution. Yeah. It's intersection. Yeah. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah I think in a physics situation, yeah. It's a kind of interesting question, called Keller geometry, for example. Yeah. Yeah, in algebraic geometry type situations, or complex geometry type situations, you can still expect that the connection goes to zero. Yeah. This kind of thing converges at least at the distributions. Yeah. But I think in differential geometry situations, no. <laughs> it's, it's wilder. Paul? Yeah, so is, is there actually a, an axiom that describes what happens when you change epsilon? I mean, yeah, so we hear epsilon, yeah. I mean, you, you, no, you can, you can use this statement itself. You have epsilon 1, epsilon 2. These two things are kind of covalent. Co co satisfying all these uh, systems. So this covalent gives you homotopy equivalence. Uh, so in your, you have this corner extension, and, and in the corner extension statement, there was an equality at the double intersection. Yes. Uh, so should I be worried that that was an equality instead of just an isomorphism? Yeah, actually, in this case, you have a kind of global, global pictures. You, we can make it exact equality. But in an actual current structure case, it's, it is better to say it's isomorphism. And in that case, it's not co-dimension two corners. We have to dip go, uh, high, arbitrary higher corners. And there are, we wrote down this property precisely, but it's, it's, it's wrong. <laughs> Russia, what was the reason for, uh, for, uh, for having your punctures on the boundary rather than in the interior of surface? Oh, I mean, you can, you, can, you can include interior boundary, interior also. You can just generalize the story. But the boundary is, uh, I mean, you want to cook up these uh, operations on a, on a differential form on M itself. And if you put the interior, it's, it's not so much natural. Because in, if, you, if you imagine the kind of a serial curve, then the boundary lies on Lagrangians. So you want to kind of construct operations on a differential form on Lagrangians. On the interior, you are supposed to put differential forms on, a, on an ambient simplex manifold. In this case, a cotangent bundle. So you want to plug in something on M. M should be zero sections. It's, uh, M should be like a sum manifold. It's not natural to put it for the boundary marked points. Because non-constant map case, it's a kind of. So. But of course, you can include the interior. In that case, the story gives somehow you have a kind of two spaces, Lagrangian and uh, ambient simplex manifold. You have operations, it's a kind of open closed story. So what if, if your, your triple system is some kind of group acting on it? So that section is like equivalent. Yeah, I think we can, we can do everything in an equivalent way. We do it in equivalent cohomology. I didn't write it up, so, but I mean, that, that, that's something interesting, because in a case we have a kind of group actions on a, on a manifold, we can try to do this in equivalent versions. And to, this, this part of the process, I explained, is not so much difficult to generalize. What is more difficult is to cook up that kind of structures. But that, that I think, is one can do it. <laughs>